Hello and welcome, I'm JD and today I want to have a look at a uh, scout frigate uh, base that you can then use as a versatile platform in order to build off and to mold into uh, various other fleets depending on the points cost. Now previously we've had a look on this channel on the uh, Spyglass Corvette and whilst it has the benefits of being quite fast, you can't put anything else on the Spyglass Corvette. Basically all your compartments and all your module slots are taking up and you don't have enough power to run both the radar and then any mounting options without either turning that radar off, which if you're a new player can be a little bit hard to do and manage all the intricacies of power management whilst you're being shot at on one side of the map while your fleet is somewhere else. And it doesn't really have the, the amount of options that you can also put on a frigate. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at this frigate base here. It is uh, 200 points, so it's going to be 15 points uh, cheaper than the build that you would have seen on this channel for the Spyglass Corvette. And we'll just run uh, top to bottom. We're going to leave, uh, we're going to leave mounting uh, for the end and come back to that. First, we're going to have a reinforced magazine at the bottom of the frigate. And then we're going to have a basic CIC in the middle and a berthing above that. Uh, basically, what we're doing is we're protecting the CIC um, from below with the reinforced magazine and the berthing module, which really has no impact on the build. However, it is um, free for your first one, so it's worthwhile taking. And that'll just soak a little bit of damage from the top and from the bottom. Now, we're also going to take a rapid DC locker. I'm going to put that at the front. So uh, any frontal shots, uh, the reinforced DC locker should be able to absorb a little bit more damage before it then has to go through the berthing because we want to protect the reactor and the drive. That's also going to give us the capability to uh, fight a few fires that would otherwise spread within uh, the ship. Uh, as well as put out any, any other uh, damage control issues. We won't be able to add any restores. You can always swap this out for a, a large DC locker or something like that if, if you want that. However, it will come at more points. No change to the reactor. Uh, the drive, now you can leave this as a stock standard drive uh, and just maintaining a 22 meters per second. You could also swap that out uh, if you have a personal preference, for example, with a, a Dragonfly, if you want it to be better for turning and not always great for a scout um, but you do um, but you could also go for something like a whiplash that does have the ability uh, to get in and out of position with its top speed increasing however um, the fact that your turn rate goes down uh, can actually be a little bit uh, on the negative for a, a scout because if you need to turn quickly to start moving away from a position if you're detected uh, you, you may actually want uh, that turn rate not being negatively impacted. Another option for only 10 more points is to actually reinforce your drive so that if you are flying away and uh, RPF uh, does hit the rear of your ship, uh, it's more likely to survive. It's only 10 more points, uh, same amount of power, so uh, just something to consider if you've got the spare points to invest that in. The main reason for this ship is the spyglass. We want to get out to that 11.5 kilometers, uh, detecting the smaller ships, giving us those eyes uh, on wherever that part of the battlefield is so that um, it informs the rest of our team as well as our positioning of what's out there. Now, uh, we also do take a micro reactor and that's for uh, a little bit later as to why. And you can see we have a, a fair amount of power. Now, the benefits of the frigate is that we do get the micro reactor slot, the three by three by three. And this is what allows us to take the versatility in terms of uh, all the other mounts that we can uh, take while still performing the spyglass scouting function that is central to this build and the main purpose of this ship. This does leave us with one uh, module left, module four. It's a small module. Um, ultimately, because this is a scout, I'd recommend either something like a scryer. Because we have a spyglass radar, we're gonna be able to see missiles at the furthest uh, or the maximum range available to the ANS. So taking a scryer or pairing a spyglass with a scryer is great to understand what is on uh, those missiles so you can take the correct actions when missiles are inbound the other thing i would suggest is the adaptive radar receiver which is going to make your sensitivity and noise filtering just that little bit better and because you're not shooting on a spyglass track anyway because of the positional and velocity errors doesn't really matter in terms of those debuffs so uh, it does cost 30 points as opposed to 10 however for things such as shuttles you're going to be able to detect them a little bit better um, noting that they are a lot thinner flutter and because of the angles and space and where you may have your frigate you may want to have that extra sensitivity to pick them up whereas uh, when we pr previously had the alliance versus the alliance as the the base factions in the game um, you know those corvettes were a little bit easier to detect 
but I'll leave that one up to you. You, you just pick um, or leave it out depending on how, how your build is going. Likewise, we have one compartment at the front left. There isn't really anything that I would recommend here. You could potentially take um, more DC, uh, but I wouldn't really consider putting anything else uh, into uh, this ship or in compartment four. Now, because we have all the extra power, this allows us to do things that we couldn't do with the Corvette. So for example, we can equip point defense uh, onto this ship. We can um, basically pick any of them. Sarissa's are a great option. You can take two. And because you have a reinforced magazine, we can also take ammunition at about 300, 350 points with some ammo. Um, you're going to be able to power two Sarissa's as well as the spyglass itself. Now it is able to not only detect, but provide a little bit longer of PD uh, coverage, noting that you can fire out to uh, 8 kilometers, uh, 7.2 kilometers, whoops, out to 8 kilometers uh, with the 15 millimeter sand shot. You can have this offset acting on, uh, as that offset scout uh, from the main portion of the fleet, but still being able to provide accurate fire on slow moving missiles from the OSP, such as containers. Otherwise, you can take any of the other point defense options. For example, you can take defenders uh, to provide the ship with its own integral point defense. You can take VLS 23s or 46s, uh, again, for the uh, use of chaff or anti missile missiles, protecting from stray missiles that may be uh, fired at your uh, location. Enemies generally don't expend too many missiles when firing on scouts um, at the moment, or from what I've seen. Uh, you know, obviously, every gameplay um, is different. However, uh, having a few AAMs up your sleeve can always be a great deterrent. Well, just keep that scout up, surviving a little bit longer um, if people are firing missiles in low quantities, just hoping for an easy kill. For other detection options, you can take a pinard. Pinards are great. You can use them to detect um, ships' radars out, below, out beyond the you know, spyglass's maximum range, depending on the type of radar that the enemy has. However, you may not want to spend the 30 points on it. Can be good. A bullseye is also great to pair with this ship. You can detect out to 11 and a half kilometers with the spyglass, and then you can lock out to nine kilometers. Uh, locks don't show obviously what direction it's coming from. So you can remain uh, ideally undetected with this frigate. However, still be able to see the enemy and unlock the enemy, allowing other ships and your allies in order to provide effects onto those ships. You can also pair this with Iwa such as blanket jammers are great. However, once you deploy that, uh, the enemy is going to know roughly the location of that, sp of that scout. Uh, it also then starts to cost more uh, power because it is quite uh, intensive and it raises your signature. So you can see here that our signature size has gone up. So be careful if you're going to use a blanket jammer or an offset scout like this because it can uh, actually backfire a little bit if you're not careful. Otherwise, uh, things that I have seen people take is also missiles, uh, whether they be size two or a very small amount of size threes, uh, in which they use to uh, have the frigate detect smaller ships, and then using the missiles from the VLS-2 or the VLS-3 on the scout frigate. So if you've been playing recently, you would have seen a lot of uh, OSP fleets taking shuttles, having a missile that is able to shoot down a shuttle within one or two missiles, uh, particularly the use of hybrids. Is a good way to sort of cut the maneuverability of the OSP down, particularly in the later stages of the game where shuttles have revealed their positions. Maybe they're going for uh, a rear capture point and you can waypoint a hybrid around a rock and then impact on a shuttle, uh, saving that capture point and then denying the OSP the ability to capture future points. One other thing I'd like to mention, I should have said this at the beginning, is also the difference between the hulls. So the sprinter and the reins is obviously different. You've got an eight centimeter armor on the sprinter, You've got a 15 centimeter armor on the range, so it's already double the amount of armor that you have, only an extra 25 points. The damage reduction, uh, you only have you have 0% on the sprinter and 5% on the reins. So any incoming damage is going to be able to be reduced. And you can see at this base level, uh, we're already at uh, just under 5%, call that you know four and a half. And then one of the drawbacks is that the frigate's obviously a little bit larger than the sprinter at 28. 900 meters squared for the radar signature compared to a 3.7, so you're about 800 meters squared larger. It only equates to a couple hundred meters uh, earlier detection uh, for uh, this frigate compared to a sprinter. And you also have a modifier to a minus 15 to flank damage probability. So that is the Reigns Scout frigate, it is a versatile base that you can work from. If you have any preference or if you found certain builds uh, have worked for you, um, 
or there are things that you absolutely take on these uh, scout frigates from down in the comments below share that knowledge with the rest of the community so that any new players also benefit from uh, what we've learned through multiple games all right that's it for me thank you very much for watching and take care